we will discuss certain property tax law changes past this legislative session. Today we're going to talk about the supplemental agricultural credit for taxes payable in 2014. We'll talk about the renter property tax refund increase and the homestead credit refund increase for homeowners. Uh, we'll talk about an eligible property tax refund notification that we have going on this year as well. And then we'll also provide you with an update on the March 21st, 2014 tax law changes and the status of, of our work in that area. But before we start, I do want to remind you that we do have a centralized location for keeping you informed of the tax law changes. Um, if you're on our website, on the homepage, uh, down towards the uh, lower right-hand corner, you'll see an orange button that's labeled Tax Law Changes. If you click on that button, it will take you to a page that is dedicated to the tax law changes. Um, today, we're going to focus on the property tax information, and the information that we present today will be available on our website after uh, the conference call. So with that, we'll start with the Supplemental Agricultural Credit. Um, each homestead qualifying for an agricultural credit for 2014 taxes is eligible for a supplemental credit. This supplemental credit is the lesser of $205 or the net property taxes on the property, excluding the house, the garage, and surrounding one acre of land. Um, software vendors and tax preparers will not need to do anything for clients who may qualify for this credit. Uh, taxpayers who qualify for this credit will not need to do anything either. They will receive a check from the Department of Revenue by October 15th of 2014. Now there are a few things that I want to note with this. For 2014 only, the Department of Revenue will administer the check, the credit, and a check will be sent. In future years, the supplemental credit information will be included on the annual property tax notices. So again, for this year only, they will receive a check. In future years, it will be a credit on the annual property tax notice. Um, since the passage of the law, we have been working closely with the counties, and um, we have determined in working with the counties that the checks will be issued to the primary homesteader. Um, Another important thing to note is unlike the property tax refund, relative agricultural homesteads do qualify for this credit. So a relative homestead is when a qualifying relative who occupies the property receives homestead, homestead status, status. And for this purpose, qualifying relatives include the owners or their spouse, spouses, grandchildren, children, siblings, or parents. So again, the qualifying relatives include the owners or their spouses, grandchildren, children, sibling, or parents. So now, as far as administering this credit, the counties will identify the taxpayers who qualify for the credit, and they will also provide us with the dollar amount of the credit. Um, once we have that information, that's what we will use to issue the checks. Any other questions about the program, such as who qualifies and the credit amount, will be handled by the county where the taxpayer resides. Um, the, the credit cannot be paid for any property that has delinquent property taxes. Uh, and when the county auditors prepare 2015 property tax notices, they will indicate on the statement that the taxpayer may have received a supplemental credit. Um, the credit does not affect the amount of taxes a property owner must pay to the county in November of 2014. And one important note for all of you is that the credit must be subtracted from taxes otherwise payable when the property owner completes their 2014 income tax return. Okay, so that concludes our portion of the supplemental agricultural credit. We're going to move on to increases in the renter property tax refund and the homestead credit refund for homeowners. Uh, these refunds are both claimed on the 2013 Form M1PR. For renter's property tax return based on rent paid in 2013, there is a 6% increase to the refund. 
And for regular homestead credit returns based on taxes payable in 2014, there is a 3% increase to the refund. Uh, for special homeowner refunds, there are no changes to the refund. So let's talk about how this legislation affects taxpayers and how the department will administer it. So for software vendors, on May 22nd, we notified you of the new renter and homeowner schedule. By now, you should have made the changes to your software. Uh, yesterday, a new error code was put in place as well. So let's go to our website and just take a look at where you can find this information. So the information, if your software vendor is available on our website, if you click the software vendor link in the tax professional column, um, on the main page here, you'll notice that both of the notifications we sent out, the one on May 20th and June 4th, are on this page. Um, however, if you click on the Forms, Specs, and Schemas tab, it will take you to the list of all the different tax returns. If you click on the Property Tax Refund, um, you'll note that the renter and the homeowner schedule final date say May 27th, 2014. This is what you should be using to update those schedules. Um, effective immediately return submitted without these changes will be rejected. Again, if you um, have not made the changes and a return is submitted, it will be rejected. So any returns uh, sent now, again, will be rejected. Um, the error code, we sent information on an error code as well. ERC rule 0995 has been implemented, and this rule states if line 9 is significant, it must equal the table lookup amount using line 8 and line 9. If line 14 is significant, it must equal the table lookup amount using line 8 and line 13. And again, for software vendors, that information that I just read is available on our website. And we do have our, um, our vendor support area available as well. So if you have any questions about these changes, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can email us at efile.devsupport at state.mn.us or you can call our hotline at 651-556-4818. So now for tax preparers, if, you, if you're a tax preparer, make sure that you accept and install any updates from your software vendors. If you don't accept and install these updates, any property tax returns you submit effective immediately will not re reflect a rate change and they will be rejected. So again, it's very important to make sure that you accept and install the updates from the, the software vendors. I also want to note that our forms and our tables on our website have been updated as well. So now let's talk about how the changes affect the taxpayer. If the taxpayer has already filed a 2013 M1 PR, they do not need to do anything. We will review the return and increase the refund by the appropriate percentage, and then the taxpayer will receive a letter from us explaining the increase and their new refund amount. Um, if the taxpayer has not filed the 2013 M1PR, starting today they can go ahead and file. We have updated our instructions and tables to reflect the percentage changes and again, the software vendors should have updated their software as well. So again, they, if they have not filed, they can go ahead and file. Um, so as a reminder, taxpayers have until August 15th of 2015 to file for a 2013 Homestead Credit Refund or a Renters Property Tax Refund. And showing on your screen now are the dates that we ask taxpayers to file by in order to get their refund as soon as possible. So if you are a renter and your total household income for 2013 is less than $57,170, uh, you could receive up to $2,120. Uh, you should file by August 15th of 2014 in order to get your refund by October 15th of 2014. Um, and taxpayers can file electronically through a tax preparer or tax prep software. And just a reminder that fees may apply there, or they can mail a paper form M1PR. 
And information such as this will be available on our website, but again, we wanted to share the information with all of you before we post it on our website for the general public. Um, if you're a homeowner and your total household income for 2013 is less than 105500 you could receive up to $2,657 as a refund. And again, you should file by August 15th of 2014 to get your refund by October 15th of 2014. And for taxpayers that are homeowners, they can file electronically for free through our website or file through a tax preparer or a software vendor or mail in a paper form. Um, and again, the overall deadline in order to receive a credit is August 15th of 2015, but we encourage taxpayers to file by that 2014 date in order to get their refund as soon as possible. Uh, one thing we want to uh, note to the software providers as well is next year when you help your clients help clients with their 2014 tax returns, you may want to review the 2013 property tax returns with them um, to see if they need to amend the return if appropriate. So that ends our discussion on the percentage change. Um, so now we want to remind you of something that passed last year. And again, just to make you aware of it, there was a Homestead Credit refund eligibility notification that passed last le legislative session. So in 2013, the law requires the Department of Revenue um, to notify taxpayers who may qualify for a Homestead Credit refund but have not filed for uh, one in 2012 or have not filed the 2013 homeowner refund. Um, in order for us to determine if a homeowner may be eligible, we will review their 2013 individual income tax information and complete an estimate of their potential refund. If the estimate refund is at least $1,000 and the taxpayer has not filed for a homestead credit refund in the last two years, we will send them a letter advising them that they may qualify for a refund. And again, the reason why we're bringing this up is because if you're a tax preparer, you may see an increase in clients who would like to complete a property tax return. If you're a software vendor, you do not need to do any programming for this. However, you may see an increase in property tax returns completed as well. So again, that was a law that was put passed last year, but we want to make you aware because notifications will be coming shortly and you may get inquiries from your clients. So with that, I'm going to transition just to give you an update on our federal conformity and where we're at with that. As you know, on March 21st, 2014, the legislator passed a law retroactively adopting most of the federal changes to the Internal Revenue Code for tax year 2013. We updated our forms and instructions on April 2nd, and we're continuing to review returns um, that were submitted before that date. So about 1.1 million income tax returns filed after April 2nd were filed with the new tax law changes. However, there were 200, approximately 260,000 returns that were filed before April 2nd, and may have qualified for the middle class tax cuts, but they needed to be reviewed by us. So just so you know, we have approximately 18,000 returns left to review. And as a reminder, when we're, we're reviewing those, one of three things may happen after our review. We will adjust the return if possible and we'll send the taxpayer a letter explaining the adjustment and send them a refund or we may request more information from the taxpayer and we'll use that information to adjust their return as possible. And we will send a, a, the taxpayer a letter explaining the adjustment and then send them a refund. Or the third scenario that could occur is that if we cannot adjust the taxpayer's return, they'll receive a letter from us um, and they may need to file an amended return to get the benefits of those tax law changes. So again, um, we have approximately 18,000 remaining there, and our goal is to have those finished by June 26th. One thing that's real important that I want to make sure that you're all aware of 
If the taxpayer's 2013 Minnesota income tax return was affected by federal conformity and they filed for a property tax refund before April 2nd, we will not be able to adjust their return. And as you know, renters and homeowners' property tax refunds are partly based on household income, and many different kinds of taxable and non-taxable income are included when computing household income for these refunds. Um, and we have no way of knowing whether additions related to federal conformity were included among those items on the return filed by the taxpayer. Therefore, anyone who filed for a property tax refund before April 2nd may need to amend their return to receive the benefits of the March 21st law changes. And again, we did take a close look at this to determine if there was something we could do, but we will not be able to amend those. And we want to make sure that you're aware of that um, in the event that your clients are coming to you. Um, one important thing to note as well, before filing an amended homeowner's or renter's return, taxpayers should make sure their income tax return has been adjusted to reflect the March 21st tax law changes. Doing that will ensure that they use accurate information on the amended return and receive the maximum refund that they're entitled to. Again, I do want to note that we will complete our review of income tax returns affected by the tax law changes on June 26th. And if the taxpayer has not heard from us by then, we do not believe their return was affected by the changes. So again, if, if you are going to be assisting clients in, in filing amended returns, please make sure that if they were affected by the federal conformity, those changes are incorporated um, before you file that amended property tax return for them. And, you know, in reference to federal conformity, we really appreciate the job that both the software vendors and the preparers did in working together with us to work through that process. We, we couldn't have done it without you, and, and we really appreciate um, your work and your communication with us and, and your feedback as well. So thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so now I want to talk a little bit about taxpayer communication. Um, you are hearing the information that I'm going to share first. We want you to be informed when your clients come to you with questions. So our next step will be to provide the information that we've shared today with all taxpayers, and our communication will range from general overviews to specific details about the increase to property tax refunds and the supplemental ag credit. We will also tell taxpayers about the various letters they could receive from us. Um, all of the things we talked about today have different requirements and implementation schedules. So as a result, the taxpayer could receive multiple notifications from us, and depending upon the taxpayer situation, they could receive some of the notifications we're going to talk about, all of the notifications, or none of the notifications. And it's important for us to understand, for you guys to, to understand what uh, your clients may be receiving, and again, the reason why they may be receiving multiple notifications is just because of the timing associated with these changes. Um, they all have different timing and therefore need different notifications, potentially. Um, so on your screen that right now, you will see a chart. Again, this chart will be available for you on our website later, but I want to walk through this and briefly explain uh, the types of letters a taxpayer may receive, the timing of that letter, and if there's a refund associated with it, the timing of the refund. So as you know, as we talked about the federal conformity, those March 21st tax law changes, um, this taxpayers may receive this letter, which again indicates that we adjusted their 2013 income tax return, or we needed more information, or we cannot adjust the return. Um, as far as the timing of those letters, we begin sending those letters on April 2nd, and we will complete the sending of those letters by June 27th, or excuse me, June 30th, uh, 2014. Now, we talked earlier in this call about the supplemental agricultural credit. We do need to send the taxpayers that are affected by that change a letter that tells 
the eligible farmers or the primary homesteaders that they will receive the supplemental agricultural credit. Um, those letters will be sent between September 18th and September 23rd. And the refund that they will be receiving will be issued between October 1st and October 15th. So all of the agricultural credits will be issued by October 15th, which is the deadline, but they'll begin between October 1st and the 15th. So we talked as well about the increase in the homestead credit refund for renters and the property tax refunds for homeowners. Um, we need to send taxpayers a notification letting them know, um, letting the taxpayers who filed by June 4th know that we have increased their property tax refund due and letting them know what the dollar amount of their new refund is. Um, so the timing of the letters will be for renter early release, those letters will go out between July 7th and July 9th. For renter regular release, those letters will go out between July 21st and July 25th. For homeowner early release, the letters will go out between August 4th and August 8th. And for the homeowner regular release, the letters will go out between September 2nd and September 9th. Now the timing of the refunds in relation to the renter and the homeowner credit um, are as follows for uh, July 15th to August 1st or August 1st to August 15th or August 15th to August 30th or September 15th to September 30th. And again, this chart will be made available to you. So we talked again about that um, eligibility for a homestead credit refund for homeowners. We do need to send a letter notifying the homeowners who did not file for the homestead credit refund in two, for 2013 and 2012 that they may be eligible for a refund of $1,000 or more. We'll be issuing those letters uh, between August 19th and August 27th of 2014. And then finally, I just want to talk about a couple additional letters. As we're uh, working through processing returns, taxpayers may receive uh, letters from us as well in relation to the processing of the returns. So we may send the taxpayer a request for more information um, if needed. A request for more information when needed from a taxpayer who filed an individual income tax return or a homestead credit refund for homeowners or a renter's property tax refund. So again, as we're processing the returns, if we determine we need additional information in order to be able to process that return, um, they may receive an, a letter from us requesting that additional information. And those will go out between June 1st and November 1st. And one thing I want to note there as well is um, these, this letter will have ongoing activity based on when the return is filed. So at any time after a return is filed, if we determine we need more information, we may send this type of notification to the taxpayer. We may also send a tax order to a taxpayer, and this would notify the taxpayer that we adjusted their return for the individual income tax or the homestead credit refund for homeowners or the renter's property tax refund. And it does include information about their appeal rights. So again, the goal is to have the bulk of those between June 1st and November 1st. However, there will be ongoing activity based on when the return is filed for those as well. Eric, we have a question about renter regular release. Sure. Hi, this is Cindy Rowley with Tax Operations. So there are a couple of questions about regular release versus early release. Early release, um, to be eligible for early release, a taxpayer would um, need to file their property or PR return electronically, accept a direct deposit for their refund, and have filed a return in the previous year. And um, in those cases, the Commissioner of Revenue may release the refund early, and so we're calling that the early release population. Everyone else falls into the regular release category.
There's also a question of even though there's a thousand dollar refund due for that notification, um, if there's a thousand dollar refund due or more notification taxpayers that are eligible for less and it has been determined so, they can still file, correct? And the answer to that is correct. They still can file. Um, this was just special, special legislation that was passed that requires uh, notification for those that we think uh, may be eligible for a refund of $1,000 or more. But if somebody uh, is eligible for less than that, they still can file. So I'm just going to wrap up two additional letters that your taxpayers may receive, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, one letter that a taxpayer may receive as well is an offset letter. The offset letter notifies the taxpayers who owe a tax or other government debt that we may take their property tax refund and apply it to the debt. Um, those letters primarily will go out between June 1st and October 30th of 2014. And again, with those as well, there will be ongoing activity based on when the return is filed. And one thing I do want to note here, the supplemental egg credit is not eligible for offset. So the uh, when we talked about that earlier, again, that is not eligible for offset. And then finally, um, Taxpayers may receive a bill from us uh, if they, after processing either their their homeowners, their renters, or their individual income tax return, if they have a past due tax amount, uh, they may receive a bill from us as well. And that time frame would be um, between June 1st and June 12th, or July 14th and July 18th. Um, and again, I just want to stress that we may send these letters to some taxpayers at other times, depending upon when they file their return. We, again, will also make this chart available to you, but we wanted you to know uh, potential communication pieces that you could receive or that your taxpayers could receive from us. And just uh, letting you know the reason behind the fact that we can't send them all at once is because of the timing of, of when these are required to occur. So before we open it up for questions, I just want to remind everyone that the information about the legislative changes will be posted on our website. Again, it's in that bottom right-hand corner, and it does say tax law changes. If you click on that at any time, you'll see a list of all the information that is available uh, broken down by the specific tax type. You can also sign up for the email notifications. Um, again, on our homepage in the right-hand corner, right next to that tax law change, you'll see a, a red kind of envelope looking. If you click on that, you can sign up for uh, different email notifications that you may be interested in. Um, and again, as we continue to work through uh, the tax bills and the legislation that was passed, we'll continue to communicate with you and to share information um, as we learn more.